good day to everybody we are meeting again through ranavir associates tax talk youtube channel to learn on taxation of sri lanka this is the third video clip under education program of the youtube tax talk channel now we will move to the powerpoint presentation today we are discussing how to arrive the taxable income from the assessable income now as we learn in the previous day through the previous session there are four sources of assessable income under section 4 of the inland revenue act that is employment income business income investment income and other sources of income this employment income covers under section 5 of the inland revenue act which covers gains and profit from employment then business income comes under section 6 of the inland revenue act and it it defined in section 195 to include trade profession and vocation in the business income the employment income to be excluded then the next is investment income which covers under section 7 of the inland revenue act covers the gains and profit from investment it is inclusive of capital gains then other sources of income under section 8 it is the gains and profit from any other source not including the profit from casual and non recurring nature income now we will see how to arrive the taxable income from assessable income the formula now first of all we have to take the assessable income from employment then assessable income from business then assessable income from investment and assessable income from other sources the total of those things is the total assessable income once we write the total assessable income from that we have to deduct the qualifying payments and reliefs there are two things qualifying payments and relief the qualifying payments is available for any taxable person uh, then the reliefs are available only for individuals once we deduct the total Uh, qualifying payments and reliefs from the total assessable income we get the taxable income now once we get the taxable income next we should learn how to calculate the income tax now we will see how to calculate the income tax for that i have separated the companies from individuals now we have to apply the applicable tax rate or rates on the assessable income now in this on capital gains always the tax rate is a flat rate of 10% for companies as well as for individuals then on liquor tobacco and gambling there's a higher tax rate of 40% for companies as well as for individuals other than these two the other rates are varying in the case of a company they on the other income the applicable tax rate or rates may be 14% 18% 24% or 28% in the case of individual on the other income there are slab rates 6% 12% 18% with 3 million slabs of each once we calculate the tax amount we have to total up the tax amount then we get the total income tax total income tax once we arrive the total income tax from that we have to deduct the tax credits there are two types of tax credits local tax credits and foreign tax credits once we deduct the total tax credit from the tax amount we are getting the balance tax payable or over payment balance tax payable or over payment now we better under, we better study the qualifying payments and reliefs in detail the qualifying payments qualifying payments 
are available for any taxable person. Whatever the things what they have proposed under the Illa Revenue Amendment Bill of 18th March 2021, I have given in red color for easy understanding. Now, as for the existing law, specified donations by any person by pub, um, and by public corporations is a qualifying payment. In addition to that, now they have added any sum paid to consolidated fund or to president's fund also a qualifying payment with effect from 1st April 2019. Then, contribution made by a resident individual to establish a shop for a female individual who is from a Samurdi beneficiary family. This is to promote Samurdi beneficiary families uh, with effect from 1st April 2021. The next is expenditure on acquisition or merger with another financial institution incurred by any financial institutions. Now government wanted to amalgamate these financial to promote the amalgamation of financial institutions from to build up the strength of these entities. With effect from 1st April 2021 such expenditure is a qualifying payment. The next expenditure incurred in film industry. There are three types of film uh, promotions. One is the production of a film. There, there is a minimum cost of 5 million. The next is construction and equipment of a new cinema. For that, the maximum cost is 25 million. Then the next third one is upgrading of a cinema. They are the maximum cost is 10 million. Once you total up these costs, it is subject to an upper limit of one third of the accessible income, one third of the accessible income of the year with the carrying forward, carrying forward facility. If there is any excess which you couldn't claim in the current year, you can carry forward to the next year and enjoy that benefit. But unfortunately, in this, the wordings in the bill, there are some uh, loopholes or weaknesses in these wordings. Now it says um, year. Here it says year. Actually, the word should be year of assessment. Year of assessment. Saying that, the other thing is of a film, a new cinema, a cinema. That means it looks like it is limiting to one item but it shouldn't be like that next with the way from 1st january 2020 a qualifying payment up to 1.2 million on certain expenditure aggregation of certain expenditure incurred by resident individuals now there are five types of expenditure health expenditure including contribution to medical insurance then vocational and other educational expenditure incurred locally. It may be for yourself or maybe for your children. Then interest paid on housing loans. But it says paid. Actually, the word should be incurred. Right. Then contribution made by an employee to any local pension schemes of employees then the next one the last one expenditure on purchase of treasury bills treasury bonds and csc listed company equity and securities now in this last item there should be a commitment on holding period but it is not there in the law. As a result, suppose somebody acquired on, we'll say, 25th of March and disposed on the 26th of March, even then, it should be covered as per the, the bill. Now, next item, there's a 600,000 rupee for each year of assessment 
on expenditure incurred on settlement of bank loans obtained for fixing of solar panels on his premises and connected to the national grid by a resident individual. This is only for resident individual. But unfortunately, uh, in this uh, clause, they have mentioned panels only. Now, in the in the case of solar systems, it, sh it should cover the entire system, which mainly include panels, inverter, and all the other system, which includes wiring and foam. Then the other thing is it covers only banks. If you but if you obtain a loan from a financial institution. That is not covered in this sentence. I think that's a weakness which they should address. Now we'll move to reliefs. Now, as I mentioned, reliefs are available only for individuals. Only for individuals. Now, personal allowance. 500,000 rupee personal allowance against any accessible income except against capital gain. Now, this is open for resident individuals as well as non-resident but Sri Lankan citizen individuals. Now the government proposed to increase this personal allowance of 500,000 rupees per year of assessment up to 3 million with effect from 1st January 2020. As a result for the year 2019-20 we get 375,000 rupees for the first nine months, 750,000 for the balance three months, altogether 1,125,000. Then employment allowance, 700,000 up to 700,000. This employment allowance up to 700,000 was there only up to 31st December 2019 for residents only. Then 25% allowance on gross rent for repair and maintenance. It covers only repairs and maintenance. Now, but the word depreciation is also there. Now suppose in one year, suppose the actual repair and maintenance total expenditure is greater than 25% of the gross rent. Then you can in that year, you can claim the, in, uh, 20, uh, the actual repair expenses. But suppose the actual expenditure is lesser than the 25% of the gross rent, then in that year you can claim the 25% without considering the actual expenses. It is to be noticed that any other expenses like rates and all, there aren't any upper limit of claiming. You can claim the entire amount without considering these limitations. Then next. Senior citizens allowance on interest up to 1.5 million per year of assessment, but this limit this is applicable only up to 31st December 2019. Thereafter, you are not getting this concession, and it is it was applicable only for resident individual. Next is resident individuals or partners. Foreign currency service income allowance up to 15 million per year of assessment. This was also there only up to 31st December 2019, and thereafter they removed this relief and introduced a new tax exemption without any upper limit. Now, as a result, with effect from 1st January 2021, 1st January 2020, any taxpayer, not only the individual, any taxpayer can claim this exemption without any upper limit under Schedule 3 to the Illa Revenue Act. Then, that's all for today's session. Now we will meet again through another video session that is the video clip number 4 to discuss the tax residency. 
which is different from the immigration and immigration residency. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge with you all.